John, it's time to preview, can you believe it, 2023. Big deals coming, Andrew. The NBA, RSNs, of course. And what's going to happen with Tom Brady? I just feel like there's probably more Johnny Miller in me. Yeah. Where, you know, when I used to watch him on golf telecasts, I, you know, he would, it was just scathing sometimes. What? That guy was choked under pressure or whatever. And that's essentially how I end up seeing the game a lot now. And we're back. The Marshan and Oran Sports Media Podcast. Looking ahead to 2023. I'm Andrew Marshan sports media columnist for the New York Post. He's John Oran. Our good buddy there, John Alrad, is the media reporter for the Sports Business Journal. And John, again, we're going to do this different like we did last week when we reviewed everything and go back and look back as we looked at the biggest stories from 2022. Now we jump ahead, 2023, what we're looking for uh, in terms of big stories that we're going to cover, that we're going to talk about here on the podcast. And there'll probably be some surprises that we're not seeing, which is what makes it the most fun. All right, look, I'm the sports business reporter. I'm a business reporter. You work for a consumer paper. You work for uh, the New York Post. But even I will say that Tom Brady has to be our first topic about whether or not he he's, he played this year with the, the Buccaneers. I've long thought that he was going to go from this year right into the Fox booth and uh, and and start, start his work as a broadcaster. Uh, there's been some doubt thrown into that now. What's going to happen, Andrew? You're, you you've been on top of this the entire time. Yeah, I'd probably say if you had a if you want a prediction, I say he plays again. Again, I don't know that. There's no like real sourcing or anything on that. If you if we talked uh, maybe six months ago, I might have said, you know what, this is like he's kind of gearing up to retire. But then I don't really like to get in these guys personal lives. But he gets divorced, uh, and that kind of changes things to me. And just watching him. He just seems to have a passion for the game. The Buccaneers might not be that good, but he's playing pretty well. You know, if you, if you, he can be a free agent this year. Could he go to San Francisco? Uh, Steve Young said that recently was putting those two together. Uh, I, so does Steve Young know something? I don't know. Maybe bottom line is I don't think he comes out, but if he does, He's got the $375 million contract that we reported on the day they announced it. Uh, so $37.5 million a year. I will say there's a lot of people in the business, very smart people, very in the know people who kind of have their doubts that Brady ever does it. You look at it, you know, you, you sign that contract, it can be a hedge. You know, if he tells Fox, I don't want to do it, what are they going to say? Yeah, I'm going to take a, a different tact on that. I, I always thought he was going to come out and waltz into the booth because that's a lot of money. I mean, if he wants to turn his back on that, then uh, uh, God love him. But I think this season, Greg Olson, who has been sort of the interim person, has been excellent as a, as a, as an analyst. I think the camaraderie between him and Kevin Burkhart, I mean, they've known each other uh, it was since uh, since Olsen was in high school in New Jersey. And that's evident when when you listen to the games. And I don't have inside knowledge of, of this, but I talked to several people like you. And I, if I'm uh, Brad Zager or Eric Shanks over at Fox, I'm, I'm looking at this booth and there's some magic there. There really is. They're really good. So would Brady come in and replace Olsen? Or would he be a sometimes third person? Would he be somebody that would be... Uh, no, nah, Brady's in there, no. Brady's in there alone if he comes. It, he's going to be the star. He's Tom Brady. You're paying Brady, him $37.5 million. You, you can't go... I don't think you can go three-man booth with Tom Brady, uh, in my opinion. First off, uh, I don't think Zager likes three-man booths, uh, number one. Number two, uh, you don't pay somebody $37.5 million and then not have to be a third unless you man. don't really think they can do the job and why give him the money in the first place. Uh, that's number two. Uh, number three, look, I've been studying Burkhart and Olsen all year. Uh, and I see some things I like. I see some things that I think they can get better at. Uh, but I do think it comes down. I think Greg Olsen, I don't want to do too much. Yeah, I know he listens. Thanks for listening, Greg. Uh, and, he, and he reads and we really appreciate that. He's been on. Uh, How is Greg Olsen not like Brian Rolap? He listens to the pod. I, I love Brian that. Brian Rolap listens to. But he totally the, listens. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, but what I was going to say is that February 12th in Glendale, Arizona, uh, Greg Olsen can make quite a career for himself, has a good game. Now, now there's two things there, okay? 
in my opinion. You know, we talk about quarterbacks uh, and the ability to win the game. Greg Olson and Kevin Burkhardt, for that matter, don't have to win the game that day. They just can't lose it. They can't be the story. And that doesn't, you know, they, they got to be themselves and they got to let it fly a little bit. But that's the day. There's going to be 100 million people watching. And, you know, the, the NFC Championship as well. You know, you're, they're getting amazing ratings for that as well. But uh, I think then that's where you kind of can say, OK, well, you know, Bray doesn't come. Maybe it's Olsen. But could they sniff around Sean McVay if he retires from or not or at least, you know, stops coaching the Rams? Uh I, I just think let's stick with Brady real quick. Uh, Cause I, I want to play the what if game. What if he, he, he retires, he, he comes in Fox's studio show is, is old and they need some younger blood in there. Hard, hard to think about Brady as young blood, but yeah, he'd, he'd be younger blood uh, compared to Jimmy Johnson compared to uh, uh, Terry Bradshaw is, is that a possible destination for him? Or is this just he's in the booth or nothing? Look for the what they're paying and they're paying him for the games. I, I look. I think when you look at it, it's a lot of money. It's Tom Brady. I mean, this is that is a amazing hire. Again, we can talk about are they worth it? These announcers. Does it matter? I just tell you when Tom Brady shows up at stadiums, it's not going to be. Um, I'm not gonna take a shot at, but you know, somebody who's doing the game right now, he's not, he needs, you got to figure out how you're getting him in the stadium. It's not just Tom Brady's there. He's at that level now. I mean, we can argue about if he's the greatest of all, you know, he's had the greatest career of all time, no doubt, uh, in terms of quarterbacks and maybe NFL players ever, uh, is he the greatest? You talk to players, um, you know, there's a, it's a subjective how you look at that, but the bottom line is he's a superstar and he's going to be in the booth if he does it. Uh, and will he do it this year? It will be amazing if he does. The thing to look at, too, is Fox has Super Bowl this year, then the following year it's CBS, and then it's Fox again because the new contracts begin. And so that's two of the next three Super Bowls. Uh, you know, Brady could be a rookie when he does that first Super Bowl. Olsen could have two of the next three Super Bowls. And here's the thing for Olsen, forgetting what Brady does, if he just does well, uh, he's, there's these jobs, are, they, do, they will open. And he'll be very well positioned. He has a podcast company. And they're just, their Q rating is about to jump Burkhart and Olsen. And if it does in a good way, they're going to be golden. Let me ask you a question about Brady. Because uh, the people that, that you know, we both talk to in the business consider him almost like can't miss uh, in terms of a broadcaster. Mm. Or, 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 you know, I you love doing that. We talked about this in the pod. You love saying things I think <laughs> that I hadn't said. <laughs> All right, go ahead. <laughs> Because actually not, uh, there are people who do think he could miss. That I, look, I, I'm going to show my age here, but uh, let's let's talk about uh, Joe Montana, the greatest quarterback of all time when he retired. Uh, he was a superstar when he retired. He would go, and every, everything that you just said about Brady uh, applied to Montana, and he was really dry and did not uh, pan, out, pan out to be a particularly... Uh, effective uh, he was a below average tv announcer yeah what are the odds that he follows that that brady follows that path versus like a tony romo who came out and and was you know uh, plug and play i would say number one i don't like judging anybody until they actually do it i hate columns that i read where people are like this person's like it's like can we let the them do it point of this pod is that we're supposed to judge people. yeah so hold on so hold on <laughs> but if i if you want to if i do i think tom brady will be good i do mm -hmm. i do i've seen what i've seen of tom brady i also think the thing that really helped romo those first couple of years he was just off the field he'd just been studying defenses for whatever many years he played 12 13 years that's a huge advantage tom brady is going to have that same advantage and I do think with Brady, uh, just like uh, with Peyton Manning, when you see on the Manning cast, I think his brain works at a different level when he's watching football. The question is, can he go from football talk to human talk? And that sometimes can be a problem. And also, is he willing to say stuff? He said he wants to be like Johnny Miller. Well, that'd be pretty interesting if, if he's, uh, you know, slicing and dicing. And I don't think he'll slice and dice, but he'll be able to see things. And I think... What gets is overrated is like, will he criticize? I mean, obviously, it's, it's good if you're criticizing when you're praise when there's praise, like Tim McCarver used to say, there's no um praise without criticism. 
but that's not really necessarily the job. The job is to tell us what we don't know and explain things simply. Can he do that? That's a that's going to be a question. Uh, and then, you know, before we leave this topic, I think the McVeigh question, he could have gotten $20 million to be Al Michaels' partner on Thursday Night Football on Amazon. He chose to come back. It's been a terrible season. Um, I do think he's linked to the quarterback uh, there. And if, um, you know, if, if they, you know, the Rams don't have any draft choices, could McVay step aside this year or, you know, in the near future? Yeah. And I, so then I, I do think you talk about the pregame show for Fox. You talk about if Brady doesn't come, if Olsen doesn't do well enough in these big games, uh, then McVay maybe gets back into the picture. So last year at this, uh, for, for all through the spring, it was the broadcaster free agent frenzy. I, yep. You've never covered anything like this. You are all over it. Um, first of all, you mentioned McVeigh. Any other free agents out there that that could be making waves? Look, the other guy, I think he has like $50 million coming to him as the Packers quarterback. So to me, I think uh, Aaron Rodgers will play. Uh, but he'd be interesting. But I could see also, is he a mainstream guy? Or does he's he do podcasts? Yeah. Yeah, like, a, you know, does he do something different? And he's sort of, I don't know. You asked me about Brady. I don't know if Aaron Rodgers would be good. There's just a weird factor with him that I think uh, if I was a little, I'd be a little bit hesitant if I was uh, hiring. I'm not saying I wouldn't hire him. I just think that he just doesn't, he just seems to march to his own drummer a little too much to do what, to do games. He just, he could be amazing, but he also could be really strange and <laughs> off-putting. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, so, and then look, I, I'm a Steeler fan. Mike Tomlin shouldn't leave. If Mike Tomlin wanted to leave, he'd have a job. What you have there, Andrew, is not the Q factor, but the weird factor. The weird factor. Uh, the weird factor. Which I think we both have the weird factor going for us. Oh, yeah, I, I got uh, weird, major weird factor. So Tom, but, Tomlin also, you think Tomlin, when he decides he, to Yeah, if he stopped, I mean, look, he shouldn't go anywhere. He loves the coach. I, I don't see him leaving, but if he did, every network would want him. Okay, let me. Uh, I just really quickly because we've been on this topic. Yeah, you want to go longer than I expected. You you love saying let's do an hour and then you like extend the first topic twelve minutes in. But it, I hope everyone's enjoying it. The the people that are currently there, Al Michaels, will he be calling Amazon games uh, this fall? He has a three year contract, uh, but I and mean, I will say Al didn't seem to really enjoy it fully. Um, they're paying him a lot of money. I don't know the exact number, but I do think it approaches a million bucks a game. Uh, so in that range, uh, maybe slightly less, but in that range. Uh, and so uh, for that reason, I think he'll be back. But I don't think it was great that he uh, uh, that he you know basically said that um, you know a lot of these games aren't good. I get it; some people like that on Twitter, but that's not really the job. The job is to call it a game, not to analyze this as a good enough game. Because I would argue that people watching it not who aren't on Twitter who care about these teams want you to do the game yeah, not tell them that game. they don't they're, they're actually choosing the one most of us we are in media right so sometimes we have to watch things or whatever but but most people are choosing to watch and that that's your audience not uh people on Twitter saying oh that's great that he's dissing this terrible game it's i mean amazon those games now kind of have that moniker and Al didn't help it of being like eh those are kind of subpar games i don't think for nearly a million dollars a game, that's what you're getting. One of the things I like about doing this podcast is that you have certain rules that I, I've I, I've used for for my own. And uh, for for instance, if you're going to call to complain, you're on the record. I'm, I'm that's now a standard John Oran rule. So I appreciate that. Another one is never complain about travel when you're a uh, what what when you're you know in, in a broadcast booth. I mean, you're taking private planes. That being said, Kirk Herb Street. And his travel from these teeny little college towns uh, to to an NFL game, you know, within two days, all all uh, all through the fall, is he going to be back on Amazon? Oh yeah, he's making is like he twenty plus back? million dollars. Well, 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 then he cut back any of his. Uh, I don't think so. Also, no, that's going to stay. Also, cry me a river. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I got to be honest with you. Nobody wants to hear. Look. I Listen, that baseball. sometimes that private plane stops like a hundred miles away from the. Uh... Oh, I heard that that one where were they, um, <laughs> Carolina and the mountains there. Uh, yeah, I mean, look at the end of the day. No, I don't think he's turning down the money, but he has talked about how hard it is. It is hard. It is hard. Like, but nobody wants to hear it. People have real jobs. Like I always say this about what I do for a living. I work hard. I don't have a real job. 
And that's how I look at it. This isn't, we're talking about sports media for a living. I mean, we're fortunate as can be, and nobody wants to hear it. Nobody wants to hear that you're at the baseball game. It, it, look, and that comes from my just baseball background, because actually base, covering baseball, all the men and women out there who cover baseball, especially beat writers, that's a real job. That's a real job. I get it. People are gonna be like, well, you're in a business. Yeah, you get there, you leave your house at 115, you get home at like midnight or one every night, and the game they ne- games never end, rain outs, et cetera, et cetera. All right, let's move to topic two though, because that gets into baseball. All right? all right. You have the Sinclair Direct TV as you know, what's that's your biggest media story of the year. Why? There is a hurricane that is uh down in down in the south, it's in the Caribbean right now. And it's gaining strength and it's coming as it's going to hit the eastern seaboard. And that's this deal right now, because DirecTV is up with Sinclair's RSNs, the Diamond Sports RSNs. That's a deal that is up in uh, in uh, right around October, sometime in the fall. And there's going to be posturing. DirecTV needs these RSNs. DirecTV is losing a Sunday ticket uh, for certain. Uh, and they are known as they, they build themselves even still as a place for sports fans. If you're a sports fan, go to direct TV. They're generally, uh, they're, they're going to be a lot better than, uh, cable systems and cable operators in terms of coming to agreements with, with sports networks and showing you every sport that you want. Um, so this is part of their DNA. They, they need to have the RSNs. What happens? These are a sense they need they need direct TV. If they lose direct TV, like who who knows what happens? That that's a massive uh, uh th- this is even bigger than the charter deal that Sinclair did er- er- earlier this year. Uh my guess is that they are gonna come to a deal. The Diamond Sports RSNs are now being he- headed up by David Preschlack. He used to do uh, distribution deals for ESPN. So he's a guy, he has relationships with all of these distributors. Um, you, you, over, over at DirecTV, you have Rob Thune. You know, he, 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 he understands the value of sports. Uh, I think they're going to end up doing a deal, but I'm going to spill tons of ink writing about the deal and, 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 and uh, what, what happens to the deal and sort of what's going to happen uh, uh, coming up to it because like, it, it, it could be an industry defining deal. At some point, one of these distributors is going to say, we're done. You know, it, you, you, you want to do your direct to consumer, we'll send our customers the link so they can do direct to consumer, but we're not going to pay you. And it could be this one. I don't think it will be. That hurricane is coming and that's going to affect leagues especially nba nhl uh and baseball it's especially going to affect teams i mean uh, again adam silver has said teams should uh, start to expect pain they're they're, they're not going to get these increases that they have been getting for their rights from the regional sports networks and if the regional sports networks lose this uh carriage from from direct tv that pain is going to come really really quickly uh, let's move to story two, because that kind of gets into what we both have as story two and how does the NBA move forward um, and what happens with it. Uh, their deal, their national deals are up after the 24-25 season. We're entering the 23, well, we're ending the 22-23 season, then we'll have 23-24. So we're still a couple of years away from those deals. But by the end of this upcoming year, end of 23, I think those things will start to take shape. Do you what, what what do you see as a timetable? I don't think they're going to start sh- take shape at the end of twenty three. Okay. ESPN and Turner have an exclusive negotiating window with the uh, NBA that runs toward the uh, to, to the end of twenty twenty three, and so a very easy prediction to make and one that I'm certain is going to be correct is at the end of this uh, at the end of twenty twenty three, for the first time in nearly a quarter century. NBA rights are going to hit the open market and already you have jockeying. I mean, in this year, you're going to see a lot of jockeying by Amazon and Apple. Uh, Google, if they're interested in sports, as has been reported, this is exactly where they would uh, take a look at things. I can tell you that Fox is going to be interested. I can tell you that NBC is going to be interested. Uh, ESPN, of course, uh, uh, it, it wants to keep uh, the, the rights. And I, I think a pretty easy bet is I, ca- I can't see the NBA going away from uh, from ESPN. Yep. 
And the, the big question is what happens with TNT, TB, uh, and, and, and Turner, uh, Warner Brothers, Discovery Sports. They have a long, long relationship with the NBA that goes back into the 1980s. But by the end of 2023, uh, how many homes is TNT going to be in? You know, it's pr- almost certainly going to be under 70 million. It'll be in, you know, probably si- mid 60s. Uh, and by the time this this deal happens, will they even be below 60 or or, or, or below 50? Hey John, I think you look at it, they're, they're, these agreements are going to be different, right? Even if ESPN and Turner keep the NBA, I think their agreements and how they're going are going to be different. Z- David Zaslov, head of... Uh, WBD, Warner Brothers. Oh, he's out of WBD. Yeah, he's, totally. Yes, yes. Warner Brothers Discovery. Uh, I got it right. Got a winner. He, uh, you know, had some comments. I do think that we point out it's the they want to do a deal for the future, not the past. I think that's kind of telling. I do think ESPN uh, would be willing to probably do give an increase, but do less games, and so that opens it up for Amazon. But here's another one I think to consider: is NBC and Peacock. Mark Lazarus, the chairman of NBC Universal, uh, he was very instrumental in Turner's deal with the NBA over the years when he was with Turner. I think there's a relationship there with Adam Silver. I think broadcast, we've talked about reach. Uh, I think NBC offers broadcast. Uh, and I just think that they could be a player. Uh, I mean, I don't know if they'll end up with it, but I think they'll be in talks. I think they will consider it. And strategically, it makes a lot of sense. You know, one thing that that I'm looking at is uh, how are how is the NBA going to uh, structure these deals? Is this going to be like, hey, you just get these games and you do whatever you want? Or I can see a scenario where they do a deal with, you know, uh, let's say uh, Google for YouTube for shortened games, the types of games that our kids that our kids would watch because my my son who is a big Washington Wizards fan uh does not sit down to watch a 2 hour Wizards game but he, he he happily he happily follows it on Twitter he happily follows the highlights could they do some sort of deal with a Google or a social media company i i i'll throw like some but something like a TikTok i guess i that feels like a smaller deal to me though that doesn't oh feel- no you got go after the young you no, get but the young you think guys people really want those are delayed broadcast. Those are basically highlights. What you're talking about? I'm I'm t- talking about either highlights or guess what? I got an alert to my phone. You got you get to watch the fourth quarter. You know, give give me two dollars. Yeah, I know they're or, big or into that, like that, and there's companies, and maybe that's a thing. Um, I you know, I think a, Amazon. I think it's a to- big thing because it's a it's a it's a thing that gets younger consumers, and every league wants to get younger. They they no, I guess, but that's not good for their out. business. Like if you're the person who used oh, to, it doesn't compare to what Disney's going to pay for it. Yeah, but not absolutely. only that, I just don't think like overall, if you're going by like you're hoping people will you know buy the fourth quarter of games all the time. I just don't think that's, I mean, that's like an add on and maybe they can make up some money with those type of things, but like they need to get people subscribing to either cable or to streaming or to make that a habit where, so they, the numbers are high. And so then the, that money is passed on uh, to the NBA. So I don't know. And I'm not saying, I think you're right. That's probably, by the way, that's totally what they want, but they also want, they also want to go to find these younger people that are not watching cable, that are not watching. The problem the is, the problem is for these, I mean, again, I, it might be solvable, but I just think that the reason games, like the reason like the NFL is 75 or 100 or whatever top shows every year is that you can't beat live. You need to watch the NFL when it happens. I mean, you know, obviously you can DVR and, you know, turn off your phone every once in a while because you have some kind of commitment. But in general, you need to watch uh, the NFL and sports live. Uh, but I will say, Tonnage sports, which I would put in that category, MLB, NHL, and NBA in terms of the regular season, which um, is important in an RSN world because every night basically you have games on. They, they lose some value um, locally when those games don't mean as much. So I think Adam Silver trying to make a tournament, that's that's smart. Can they make up the money globally with subscription? Maybe, uh, because I do think that we talk about MLS deal, we're going to get to Apple in a second. Uh, I do think that kind of idea does make some sense. 
Uh, does it work with MLS? We'll get into that in a moment. But I do think they have to think of things differently. I think they're going to be interested to see how MLS goes. And uh, that that's going to be a big deal as to not that they're like the same thing. But if you if the if MLS is successful and then you're the NBA, and you say, well, if MLS is successful doing this, we're the number one league and there's really no rivals. Right. MLS, we've talked about a number of times. There's it's not a top five league. It's in top 10, but not a top five league in the world. Um, a lot of rivals uh, that people can choose to watch. And there's only so much time in the day. NBA is unrivaled uh, in terms of being the number one league, probably the second biggest sport in the world after soccer. You look at it. Could that work for them? I think there's probably there might be a business model there. Uh, that goes to our next topic, which is on, on your sheet. What is Apple's plan for sports? You just uh, you you just made a comment. Uh, if MLS is successful on Apple, uh, here's a prediction for 2023. MLS is going to be wildly successful on Apple. It's going to be one of the big biggest successes in all of sports, according to MLS and Apple. And we're not going to be able to see any kind of evidence from it. We're not going to see viewer figures. We're not going to see subscription numbers. We're going to get, even the people that are going to be buying ads to it, they're not going to know. But if we take the MLS and Apple at their words, a huge success. Great success. John Oren, the mailman. What a delivery there. Thank you very I, much. Thank you. <laughs> I was ready to be like, wait, what? You're going to go there? All right. Because I go back and forth. There are some people in the business who think it's going to be an utter disaster. Uh, I think maybe... Um, it could be okay, you know, depending on what your metric is of what success is. And you're right, they're not going to reveal that. They're starting off with three to 400 season ticket holders who already have Apple TV Plus subscriptions to MLS. Uh, the price is high. Uh, do they add Messi? Do people have to watch Messi around the world? Or do they just want to watch highlights? And is it viewed as his retirement tour? Well, I mean, Messi helps. I mean, I don't, there's no way Messi doesn't, is not a huge boon for MLS, in my opinion. Again, the financials, they're going to pay him a boatload of money, of course. Uh, and it's going to be a great deal for him. But still, regardless of that, you have to uh, look at it from MLS and that's going to be a win. Uh, but look, there's a different business model. I think the problem with Apple, and let's just get an Apple strategy, is they're just used to kind of playing bully ball uh, in terms of what they do. Uh, in, in that, I, what I mean by that is that they're just able, because of the products that they've created, to be able to tell people what to do, and and also just have access to rights, like for whatever they wanted. Uh, generally speaking, sports is just a different animal, right? It's just not how it works. These rights aren't up. The NBA is up now. NASCAR's up. Uh, UFC, I think, is up pretty soon. Pac-12 is up. So, but baseball's not up uh nfl in terms of you know the the regular packages ha haven't been up you know just agreed upon uh baseball is not up for eight years uh, you know I'm, I'm, nhl just did a deal so they're not like there's deals everywhere to be done uh and you know this is an argument we've had kind of where you kind of gotten on amazon having thursday night football you have to start somewhere even if you're amazon or apple you don't just get the super bowl you don't get the nba they're not gonna get the nba finals going to be prove it first and then maybe that next deal you might be able to be in play for you know for even more important games i do wonder is there a number that they that apple could offer adam silver in order to get everything including the nba finals because money does talk like how much would they I have yes but i don't know i don't think there's a money it would be an unrealistic that they number. would offer yeah there's not a number that they would offer that is so much greater that they would say you know what let's go for this and we're going to just break the other model. We're going to do five, 10 years with Apple and hope this works. And then we have no idea where we're going to be in five to 10 years. Cause if it doesn't work, then we just kind of uh, crushed ESPN and Turner and all these others entities potentially. Uh, and maybe we can come back to them. Yeah. I mean, that's the, I think the concern if you're MLS. This to me is a very low risk move for MLS. They got money that they were not going to get from traditional uh, me media they, they they've been on traditional media now for uh 10 20 going on 30 years and they have not gotten traction they've not built an, a, a tv they're not a very good tv sport yet and and but, so but hold a second it's, 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 wait, hold a second. but that's chicken and egg stuff john okay because i'm a soccer guy right are they not a good tv sport because the distribution wasn't good enough are they not a great tv league 
because the quality of the league wasn't good enough. I think the dis- distribution was fine. They were on ESPN and Exactly. Fox. Yeah. So now you're changing the distribution model. And we're going to bring in the next topic. Your number three is name one sport that will move networks. All right. And one of them you have is NWSL. Another one. Is this a sport? It's, it's sports not a entertainment, sport. Yeah. WWE. What? Uh, not, 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 not a sport, but sports entertainment, I suppose. Right. Okay. So WWE but- you also have on there. Uh, Nick Khan and all those people over there. Uh, will they move around from Peacock and NBC and Fox? Um, so, yeah, what I was getting to is that the NWSL. So we had a pre-talk about this. Right, give me your argument. Let, let the people, I, I don't want to put words in your mouth. What's your NWSL Apple argument? They've, if the NWSL went on to Apple. For people who don't know, that's the Women's Professional League. Uh, it, it's the same as like the MLS. You know, it's a much younger league, not as mature in terms of uh, its growth as compared to MLS. Not in the same category. And they, they have a deal with CBS uh, right now. Their deal is up uh, next year in 2023. They're going to start to uh, to negotiate it. Uh, CBS carried their uh, championship game in prime time and god i i i forget what the numbers were but it's right around about a million views yeah, around they, a million. They, 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 they did they did a nice job uh, with that the nwsl is coming to market with all of its national rights and all of its global rights it's one uh just very nice elegant package of rights just like mls had uh apple has already done the mls deal uh, here's another soccer property and uh, another tre- uh, um, uh, another trend of our podcast is about the growth of women's sports. I can see Apple saying, we want to get uh, that property. We want to pair it with MLS and then we will have American soccer uh, on, uh, on, on Apple. And so one of the predictions that I had in my prediction column is that NWSL is going to have some interest from TV companies similar to MLS they're not the TV networks are not going to be bidding as much as the NWSL wants and they're going to end up paired with MLS at Apple and if you're a soccer fan in America that's where you're going to go you're you're, you're going to be an Apple TV plus subscriber yeah maybe women's soccer women's sports you know I'm bullish on them uh and you know the idea of the NWSL being able to reach any women's soccer fan in the world uh, easily, that does make some sense. Well, it depends how you look at it. Like, I I guess, you know, CBS isn't paying a lot of money to them. I I guess it depends how you look at it. The problem I think, though, is, again, their their product, I mean, they actually have a lot of the best players in the world uh, as opposed to the MLS. Um, The issue, I think, though, is that if you're getting around a million when you're on broadcast TV, Right. That's just domestically, you know, maybe internationally these numbers would change. But I mean, how many people out of those a million would have subscribed now? They're, but they're now they're, let me just say they're working with different numbers. Right. They're not working with NBA numbers. They're working with small fees. So Apple, there, there might be something there. If it makes There's sense. certainly a risk to it because you want the most distribution. But let me ask you a question. Let's take an NFL game, just a generic NFL game. The same game is played at the same time on NFL Network or on Amazon Prime, Prime Video. What gets more viewers? I think it's similar. I, I think you're crazy. I think it, 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 there more people access Prime Video than, 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 than a strict cable channel. We're not talking about broad, broadcast here. And so my point is NWSL, all their regular season games are on CBS Sports Network, was, which isn't even rated. I don't know how many homes uh, CBS Sports Network is in, I guarantee you that they're going to have a bigger audience on Apple TV plus. Maybe you're right. I mean, it might be more accessible. I think you make a pretty good argument. Um, And that's what, but, but again, let's just say that's true. Okay. And we're talking about Apple and this is kind of my third story and this combines with yours. Um, And again, I'm bullish on women's sports, but we're talking about the NWSL. Okay. This is a burgeoning league um, that might have a future. They really had a conversation with Crystal Dunn a few years ago. I mean, one of the big issues is they got to get into the MLS arenas and stadiums. And so, you know, that they have a better venues, um, you know, that's where they need to grow. Uh, and that's one aspect. Um, I mean, I think the league has potential, but again, this isn't really comparing apples to apples in terms of Apple. 
<laughs> I don't think that was good, but it came to my oh, that was and instead of a rim shot, Chris Mason, can we do a groan on that one? That was a that was a bad one. Fool this man, no! John. Okay, let's just go before we get to no, number four uh, as we you know move towards the end here. Name one sport that will move networks. That was one of your questions. So you're going NWSL or anybody on NWSL, but also. Uh, how soon will Chris Legentil be emailing one of the two of us when he hears his name on our pod? Because uh, one of my predictions is that Chris is uh, Legentil. Let's just tell people who don't know a uh, household name, of course. Household. WWE's- <laughs> Everybody knows Chris Legentil. WWE, yeah. uh, WWE is going to come off of Fox Friday night and it's going to go to uh, NBC. That's my prediction. Wow. All right. I have no prediction about WWE. Uh, but I will say I will answer your question. Although I could I could have I could have avoided it because I, I think we could, I could have just moved to the next topic. I will say the Pac-12 will be on. Oh, um, there you go. Yeah, that's a good. That's a bad. That's Amazon. a better answer. Yeah, I'll go Amazon. I only uh, started covering. Although I think maybe ESPN as well, but I, I think a little more shaky with ESPN. But I, I'd say Amazon they, they end up with at least part of their deal. I only started covering the WWE by the way because all the sports uh, divisions. Eric Shanks is the one doing those deals. You know, uh, Pete Pavakwa yeah, is the always, one doing they those definitely, deals. They, they push hard to get coverage. And we, the post, we do a lot of wrestling coverage. We're all over it. I'm just not. Of course, Glassbeagle. He's a. Ryan uh, Glassbeagle. He's, he's, uh, a, one of, uh, our sports writers. Who's, he's, he's a man of all, he you knows everything. <laughs> Glassbeagle. If you don't know. He is Ryan prolific. Glassbeagle. Glassbeagle does media. There's wrestling. He his critiques on food uh, on his Twitter is unbelievable. Uh, is any random thing happening in his life? Tremendous follow on Twitter is Ryan Glassbeagle. He, like he is a gen, he's like a Gen Z uh, uh, Larry King, just about. Yes, he's the King thing exactly. Gen Z King's thing, excellent. <laughs> Question number four. Mine is: Does ESPN go full full bore into gambling, and how does it change its business spinoff? The whole thing, UFC coming up, NBA. Let's do a little ESPN. We do ESPN so much, so let's just spend just a couple of minutes on ESPN here. What what do you see for ESPN? They spin off? That gonna happen or no? I don't see it happening, but I I, I, I it's hard to figure out how um um what Iger is going to do now now that he's coming back because this is the 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 whole business has changed so much in two years. Two years ago, that would have been an impossibility to think about. Does he come back now and say like, well, let's just kind of get our sports and create a really big sports company uh, and sort of, you know, attached to us, but on its own? I don't think so. But I I, I, I don't know enough to, to say absolutely not 100%. And do they finally do a gambling deal? Uh, I think they do a gambling deal. They, they have executives there that are, are, are much warmer we're dealing with, uh, with with gambling related companies. I can see them licensing their name uh, over it. I don't see them getting into the the sports book business. But I I and if you talk to Jimmy Pitaro or Burke Magnus, they'll say we're already deep into gambling. They get they have gambling shows. They take gambling advertising, uh, and so they already do a lot. I can see them doing more though. Yeah, I mean Schefter on Monday nights they do that thing where he says like the odds uh, from I forget which gambling site. Um, but yeah, so I, I think they do. And does that, you know, that could be a big infusion of money into the ESPN ecosystem. Uh, and I don't see them spinning off either if I'm making a prediction there. This is yours, number story number four for you. Will Live Golf get a deal? Yes. What do you think? I say yes. And I say Fox. I don't think it's going to Fox. Oh, John Orand. I, John Orand. What do you got? <laughs> Our good friend, John Orand. Uh, Orand. What do you got? Uh, I like it. They're, they're going to they're, they're gonna do a deal. They're, it's not going to be a big deal. They're going to patch something together with a, uh, uh, like a, one of the fifth or sixth broadcast networks, like a, the CW or something like that. And they're, they're going to be able to try to get on in that way. But it's uh, it has become... So that's where you think they end up, like the CW? Yeah, I think that the, 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 you so wait, there's the, smoke there. Or you're just throwing the CW out there. Uh, there's a little bit of smoke there. All right, uh, this, the, the, yeah, and 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 the, uh, the there were Fox talks. They were getting close to a deal, but I've been told that that went that went south. Okay, all right. So I'm taking Fox off there. John was told. Uh, <laughs> Chris Mason. That's a uh, edit that. <laughs> All right, we'll leave that in there. But John has sources saying it's off, so um, I'm gonna forget I said that. You have as your number five, Andrew. The future of Turner Sports. 
they went through a rough year in 2022. Lenny Daniels is out. Luis Silberwasser has been there for about nine months or so. There's been a lot of cost cuttings. They've had to lay some people off. What's 2023 look like? I just think they're one of the more interesting questions business-wise. Um, you know, we've talked about this. I know maybe because it's Turner, you know, it's TNT and TBS, but, you know, they have a underrated in some regards, powerful portfolio of live sports uh, from baseball to basketball to hockey. And of course the NBA, not to mention the match. Uh, they have some sports entertainment, the wrestling. Uh, and so uh, they have a lot. Uh, and what direction are they going? You've you know mentioned this, um, you know, a lot that you, uh, you know, talked to David Zaslov, who's the head of Warner Brothers Discovery, uh, and it's talked about the marketplace being, the sports marketplace being ripe in the United States. So what does that mean for Turner? You know, how hard do they go for the NBA? Or, speaking of wrestling, do they do a heel turn and go hard after UFC, you know, and just add to it um, and, you know, make that, price that up? Uh, and they they find something. And, and where do they go world rights? We always talk about Apple and Amazon with the subscription. And it's like, yeah, Apple can have, you know, like, it's like we get back to Apple. You know, just because they have the idea doesn't mean they have to be the one to do it. It's not like Disney isn't worldwide. It's not like all these companies, you know, Peacock, NBC, uh, Paramount Plus, they all could be thinking, how do we do world subscription? It's not like they just have to, you know, uh, you know, take a back seat necessarily to Apple in the sports space if they want to sell subscriptions around the world. I mean, it gets a little bit more tricky, I think. You're totally right. And that's that's part of the Peacock strategy and that's part of the ESPN Plus strategy. The only problem with that is that Apple yes. could buy NBC, Fox, uh, ESPN, and CBS all together in one fell swoop. And They and could, but like, are they, they, this Here's the thing. I mean, you know, as we cover these companies, you learn more about them. They just don't seem to do stuff just because they can. Like they do, you know, they can do anything. We always talk about they have endless money. They don't, they seem to make deals that they think are good deals. They don't seem to make anything. I do think with subscription, because they are so omnipresent with their devices and they take 30% uh, from every cut, um, it's a little bit of a monopoly. That might be coming to a head, I think. You just hit the nail on the head. They are fiscally disciplined, as is Google. People were talking about Google at uh, going after Sunday Ticket. Google, for their entire history, has proved not to be somebody that overpays for for rights. That's the that's not within the DNA of those companies, which are, which is what makes what Amazon has done so surprising to me because it has come in and it has outbid people in, in, in order to get those rights. But I think you have to do that. Like, I don't know. I if you want it. the rights, you have to do it. You have to absolutely. Murdoch yeah. did this in the early nineties and look what it did for Fox and uh, the network. It led to Fox news, led to FS one. Uh, and it all started with the fact that he just said, screw you CBS. I'm going to outbid you by a hundred million dollars. Uh, and, uh, the NFL took their money. Um, and you know, the rest is history. I think if you're the insurgent, that's what you have to do. And so, you know, that's what, um, I think Amazon, you know, has had to do. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. All right, let's go to my number five, the college football playoff. It's expanding. Uh, I think personally, it is one of the most overrated packages that is on the market right now uh because if you look at the semifinal games going back to you know a, a decade they have been blowout games the a, a, a bizarre percentage of these are you know two score games or more more by the uh final whistle and now you're gonna have a team like Boise State traveling to Tuscaloosa and playing at Alabama uh, in, in, an, in an early round game, uh, do you think that'll be competitive? No, those aren't. But like, well, only it's going to be 12 teams, right? So uh, you have some buys. So that first weekend's kind of like a wild card weekend. I think for those fan bases, I think it has a chance. I yeah, agree. For the fan bases, yeah. When you get to the quarterfinals. However, you get an upset, you know, one year, that would be a pretty astounding story. It would be. It, it would also be an almost unbelievable. I mean, they're not upset, upsets in football like they are in basketball. Yeah, all right. I mean, well, so what are you saying? It's it's not valuable. 
No, I, I well, if I were a consultant, I would say like, I, if I, if anybody can pick those up, I, I don't really want them, but I like ESPN. But they're going to package associated. them together long term with the national championship. Yeah, right? ESPN's associated with the CFP, so ESPN almost certainly is going to get some of them. Uh, they've already uh, Jimmy Pitaro has has been very open about saying that he's happy to to share that w- with other networks. I don't think they're going to go more to more than two networks, uh, and I, I think that. Uh, you know, it fits in with Turner. Uh, if you want one, we've always been looking for when they're going to come in in a big way. I think they could come in in a big way for the CFP, but I see it going to ESPN and to Fox. ESPN will definitely try to keep uh, the national championship long term, but do you see Fox getting in there long term? I just feel like they've kind of, uh, especially with the Big Ten, they've kind of have some very important voices that might push for them. Yeah, I'd be I'd be surprised. I know that they would want it in, in an ideal world. They would want to be able to do it. And if the price gets too high, I can see ESPN saying we'll we'll get it every other year, which is, you know, uh, what they did in, in the NHL with the Stanley Cup final. Uh, but I I the college football is so important to, to ESPN. I would be really surprised if they allowed uh, another network to come in to get the semifinals and final. I just, I think that they, they prioritize that. All right, before we go, what's your prediction? I say, yeah, I probably agree with you, ESPN and Fox. That's how it ends up. I think they're just the dominant now voices in college football. Uh, and I think, you know, Fox has done a good job of, uh, you know, getting in there and not boxing out ESPN, but doing a good job of being kind of uh, on par, or close to on par with uh, ESPN. Andrew, our pod is awful when we agree with each other. Come on, man. <laughs> you know, last week, so I was listening back to that. I was going at you. Um, that was that was fun. I, you caused me to sweat at the temples. I, I, it, was, it was like an interrogation. <laughs> it's like doing a live show. All right, John. Uh, I wish you a great new year. And everyone listening, a great new year. If you want to, you know, really have some good luck towards the uh, new year, you give us a five-star review. Uh, you... Uh, like it uh, so you're following it and um if you want to write some comments too uh we always appreciate that and we want to send a special happy new year to uh, ac wyatt and chris mason who do this uh podcast and put it all together every week yeah definitely good karma comes from um, uh, creating comments on uh, on the positive podcast. comments good good positive comments uh andrew we've been doing this for about a year and a half a little less than a year and a half uh, every single one has been a ton of fun. I really enjoy doing this with you. Happy New Year. And uh, thank you, everybody, for, for listening. Listening.